This meeting is being recorded. Okay, uh, so this week uh, we have changed things up a little bit. We have put the announcements in the back of your service booklet. Uh, so folks at home, if you didn't download the service booklet, uh, most of the announcements are also in the messenger. So you've got two opportunities, messenger or back of bulletin. Um, I will make a note of just a few important things that I want you to know about from here. Uh, and the most important is that we have a guest preacher this morning, Abby. Many of you have seen her, but many of you have not heard her. So she is going to preach for us this morning. Um, her bio is in the bulletin if you want to get to know her. And then, of course, after service, please uh, take an opportunity to introduce yourselves. Just quickly want to say uh, we are now serving the Common Cup at Communion. So you have uh, the option to either drink from the chalice or ask the EM to intinct for you. Uh, again, we will be wearing masks and sanitizing our hands before we start, uh, start distributing communion. So know those things. Uh, the only last thing I want to say uh, is coffee hour. Um, we have coffee hour now. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet now, um, also online, but I don't understand how that works, so somebody else will have to explain it to you all. Um, but again, we will have coffee hour, and my little joke is uh, we will have coffee hour, but if there's no volunteer for coffee hour or volunteers, then there'll be no coffee. And coffee hour without coffee is just an hour. So anyway... Uh, I'm now going to ask everyone, both here in the sanctuary and at home, to just take a moment of silence and to open up your hearts and your minds and your souls to the presence of the Holy Spirit. And after a moment, we will um, hit the bell and then begin this morning's service with the litany of penitence. Turning to page 267 in the Book of Common Prayer or page 2 in your service booklet, um, let's all together say, Most Holy and Merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven, saying together, have mercy on us, Lord. We have ignored your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, and for, and for our unwillingness to see human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt 
towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of, our son, of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of your resurrection. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins, His mercy endureth forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now please be seated for the reading of the lessons. The first reading for today is from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. And then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Prezites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the cry of the, is, of the Israelites is now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to the Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 63. It's on page 670 in the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself, my lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. You know, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. For those 18 who were killed when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, 
and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears, fr if it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Please sit. I'm going to join you. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. A lot of familiar faces here, but just in case. My name is Abby Mulcahy. Let's take this off. I've gotten so used to having a mask on. Again, my name is Abby Mulcahy, and I'm a member of the congregation here at St. Gabe's. I joined you in the summer in the midst of pandemic mayhem from Good Samaritan in Corvallis. If I'm not familiar to you, that's because I usually attend the 8 a.m. All of you have no excuse. Uh, but I'm generally in the back room running microphones and cameras. You likely have heard Everett say my name in the midst of the service should something need adjusting. All of that said, it's good to be with you. I must confess, Lent is my favorite part of the year. As a child, my first real memories of church are Ash Wednesday. It was such a strange experience. My family went to church every Sunday, but going to church in the middle of the week was a rare occurrence. Add to that getting dirty on purpose <laughs> in the middle of the service, and while I was convinced we had entered some magnificent topsy-turvy land, the somber music and muted lighting were warm and comforting in the midst of bleak winter just outside the church doors. After the joy of Christmas and the frantic ec ecstasy of Mardi Gras, I always look forward to the Lenten months. I find myself craving the time for quiet contemplation. The practices of our faith tradition, in particular fasting, abstinence, and prayer, make it so that I appreciate more what I have and focus less on what I do not. Each year I find myself wanting to dive deeper, but just as I begin to tip over the precipice and lose perspective, the great crescendo of the passion draws me back and sweeps me into Easter, overjoyed, if a bit baffled, by the lights, colors, sounds, and celebration. We're not there just yet. Right now, we're coming up on the midpoint of Lent. It's March 24th this year, if you're counting. And I find myself reflecting. What have I set in motion to prepare for Holy Week, for Easter? What do I still need to do? Our gospel today comes from the 13th chapter of the book of Luke. If you heard today's reading and thought to yourself, what in the world? You're not alone. Sacrifices of the Galileans, the Tower of Siloam, I've also called, heard it called Siloam, you decide. What's all of that about? At face value, all I really got was repent, repent, repent. Often this is referred to as the repent or perish chapter of Luke. And there's a temptation here to fall into a fire and brimstone sort of reading, to try to scare or shame us all into turning it around. Don't worry, this isn't that sort of sermon. From where I'm standing, there's more to the story, I guess it's sitting. I'd like to put this into context, or at least try. This reading is from the Gospel of Luke, meaning that Luke was a person, a real flesh and blood, bad habits, not so hidden quirks person. In order to talk about what he wrote, we need to talk about him. Let's start with these three things. First, Luke was a physician. As a health services researcher, I spend a great deal of time chatting with physicians and find this information rather comforting. This is a man of science and God. This is a man I can talk to. Second, Luke was not one of the 12 who followed Jesus. Instead, he, like us, was dependent on the knowledge and traditions he learned from eyewitnesses to Jesus' life. Like us, Luke knew the details of Jesus' life and ministry through the stories of others. Third, Luke was likely from Antioch, which is in modern-day Turkey. This mean means that he, unlike Jesus and the disciples, was not a Palestinian. Instead, Luke was probably a Gentile and was heavily influenced by Greece and Rome. Luke's gospel is unlike the others. Those of you who have read the Iliad or the Odyssey will recognize Luke's gospel as Hellenistic in style. He opens his gospel with a literary prologue addressed to the reader. He calls the reader, calls us, Theophilus, and this word translates to friend of God. To put it plainly, Luke is reaching out to us and telling us a story. 
Moreover, he's telling a story in a way that Greek or Roman listeners would recognize. He's telling a story of Jesus for Gentiles. He's telling the story of Jesus for us. The goal of Luke's gospel is to tie the Old and New Testaments together. The emphasis in Luke's gospel is on Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promises. Sit with that for a moment. Luke isn't just telling us the story of Jesus' life and ministry. He's telling us the story of Jesus, of the triune God, from the beginning of time. And Luke doesn't just, doesn't just tell a story in a way we would recognize. He incorporates details, real places and world events, including the tower, tower at Salem. This was a tower in old Jerusalem, Jerusalem that was remembered because it fell, fell and killed 18 people. He bring the, brings these in to emphasize the need for individual repentance. It'd be like telling a story today and saying it happened during Hurricane Katrina or the ice storm in Texas last year. These real places and events lo locate Luke's gospel and his message in time and space. I don't know about you, but while I know the story of Jesus to be true, it feels a little unreal. Here's this great man, more than a man, God incarnate, God made flesh, who did all of these awesome things. I have a hard time feeling like he and I live on the same planet. To me, Jesus feels too exciting, and I feel too ordinary. But Luke gives us a magnificent gift. Luke anchors his gospel in reality, and this is the same reality we share right here, right now. So how does the world that Luke lived in compare to the one we live in today? In some ways, I wager that Luke would be totally lost. Things like iPhones, Starbucks, and Teslas would be beyond him. Can you imagine trying to explain the concept of social media or nuclear weapons to a first century Roman? But our obsessions with distraction, ego, indulgences, conquest, and status symbols would be all too familiar. I don't mean to scare anyone off their coffee or turn against Tesla drivers. The point I'm trying to make, the point here, the point of Lent, is how we grow closer to God. Luke is gifting us the opportunity to do so. He's giving us a blueprint. He is asking us to identify with Jesus, to take up the mantle of caring for the poor, the outcast and afflicted, to devote ourselves to the service of God. I'll leave you with this. Through Luke, we are connected to God in time and space. We're not being asked to make grand gestures in the interest of repentance. The days of sackcloth and ashes are essentially over. Instead, I believe the work we are called to do, this Lent and always, is to recognize and work on those small things in ourselves and our communities, to heal our own hurts and meet our own needs until those good works bubble over into healing the world around us. I think I probably should have given Abby a little bit more of an intro. This was her first time preaching. Um, and she is in the process of, perhaps we can call it pre-discernment, um, to see if God is calling her to the priesthood. So for me, this was a very important point in Abby's spiritual life. So thank you, Abby, very much. And you can sit. You don't have to keep standing. <laughs> At least not yet. Um, so I just wanted to let you all know that. I remember the first time I preached, I was terrified. Um, but in doing so, in preaching before a group of people, it was an incredibly powerful experience. So watching and listening to Abby preach just called back all of that. Ooh, hearing the voice of God and being like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. All right, so with that post-introduction, I ask you all to stand here in the sanctuary and at home prepare so that we may, we may proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hello, everyone. I know Jim is supposed to do the prayers of the people, but it looks like we're having a, a little glitch. That's okay. God still loves us. Um, I'm going to do a... Uh, anybody feel called to read the prayers of the people this morning? Susan, come on up. Yes, it's, you can't do it from your seat. I'm sorry. Yes, sit in front of this big crowd. Stand in front of this big crowd and... Please, thank okay, you. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. In the Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for La Iglesia Angelica de Mexico, and in our own diocese, we pray for Oregon Episcopal School, William Temple House, Port and St. Christopher Port, or Port Orford. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, our bishop, Diana Akiyama, for our parish clergy, Reverend Everett, Deacon Tom, Deacon Roger, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth for thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We pray for our community, that all of St. Gabriel's will be a resource to our neighbors. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, and Kate, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Please join me in praying aloud for those who are in immediate need of healing prayer, by bold name only. For Kat, Lindsay, Bliss and Zoe, Kimberly, Lori, Marion, Leslie, Reuben, Sarah, Betty, Shemin's family in Ukraine, Kialani, the Carmen family, the Shuckman family, Lauren, Kate, Kylie, George, K 
Pat, Mona, the Tutai family, and Ellen, Adam, Ellen. Are there others? And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life, departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially beseeching thee to grant them the continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Gabriel and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Remembering Mary Fujigami, Tom Robinette, and Jay Christensen. Are there others? Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator, mediator and advocate. Amen. I ask you now, everyone here and at home, to please join me in the prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. The prayer for our search process. Holy One, open our hearts and minds that we may discern your will. Grant us patience and perseverance as we wonder and wait for the one whom you send. We pray for a new rector who will help us embody the deep, unbounded love of Christ that is alive in our parish and community. Help the search committee to listen and respond with wisdom and gratitude each step of the way. Amen. We pray for God's wisdom and guidance for our search committee, for Joan and Ginger, Holly, Tom, Tim, Ian, and George. And this morning I have for birthdays Kevin Murphy, Jan, Jan Galloway, Ron Koppel, and Julia Richardson. Is there anyone on, oops, I can't see anyone on Zoom. Is there anyone on Zoom? Let's see, I think I can just easily mess around here and make the people in the booth go absolutely bonkers. Ta-da! All right, I can see y'all now. Uh, well, not all of you, but some of you. Is there anyone on Zoom having a birthday? You gotta unmute yourself and let me know. Nope. All right, well, I know some of these people I listed will be here at the 10 o'clock, uh, unless they're off celebrating their birthdays, in which case I won't bless them. <laughs> Joking. Uh, let us pray for all of those folks and for others who are celebrating a birthday this week. Watch over thy children, Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for anniversaries, I have George and Debbie Kyler, who I know will be at the 10 o'clock. Is there anyone on Zoom who's having an anniversary this week? Nope. Okay. Um, let's pray for George and Debbie. O oh God, who has so consecrated the state of matrimony that in it is represented the spiritual marriage and unity betwixt Christ and his church, look mercifully upon these, thy servants, that they may love, honor, and cherish each other, and so live together in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and of peace. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Okay, so if I made the people in the booth crazy by turning this over to uh, gallery view, I'm now going to uh, make Linda Omar crazy as I ask everyone on Zoom if they would unmute themselves. When we come back from the mountain, oh, that is so that when I'm I say, just cast up Oops. and we turn left and go up over. Oh, go somebody's watching TV. All right, let's just do it then. The peace okay. of the Lord be always with you. Always.
Peace. 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 Everett, unmute, please. Everett. Unmute me. Sorry, Becky. It is my job to drive people who do the technology here uh, absolutely bonkers. So I'm sorry about that, everyone, but I just got to hear your voices and see your faces. All right, now I appeal to you, friends, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as the living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Please stand. Turning to page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer or page 8 in your service booklet. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this <clears throat> thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I have struggled uh, probably since we began to have service here in the uh, sanctuary, while some of you have remained home on Zoom, to find a prayer that I felt appropriately expressed the fact that though we are not in the same place, we are the same people. So this is my third try, um, and this is one that I do feel actually captures what I hope we all can feel during this communion, that we are not apart but together. So I ask, before we distribute communion, let all of us here and at home pray. God, creator of time and space, may the love and faith which makes this the bread, the body of Christ, and this wine, his blood, enfold us now. Help us to remember that we who are here and we who are at home are one family, one community of faith, and make us all one with the whole body of Christ. Amen. Welcome to gather around the chancel. Don't be shy. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of life. 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 Body of Christ, the cup of salvation. 
stand and let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, Thy blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your family, almighty God, and by your gracious, gov by your gracious goodness, may they be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. And now, my friends, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>